In this video, I will go over the 2G Wecker oxidation catalytic cycle that converts alkenes to ketones. Uh, but of course, when this R is a hydrogen atom, the product is acetaldehyde. The catalyst is palladium 2 plus. We start from this palladium dichloride. It reacts with two additional chloride anions and form this transition metal complex. Uh, this is a 48 transition metal complex. The palladium has an oxidation number of uh, plus 2. There is a negative 1 oxidation number on each of the four chloride ligands. Therefore, the overall charge is 2 minus. And this structure is a square planar structure. We learned that when we have 48, 5D8 transition metal, it's more likely to form a square planar structure. And the transition metal center is often surrounded by 16 valence electrons. Uh, the dx squared minus y squared orbital is empty. Uh, this is because dx squared minus y squared feels really strong repulsion from the four ligands uh, aligned in the x direction and y direction in crystal field theory. In ligand field theory, dx squared minus y squared becomes a high energy anti-bonding orbital and thus is unoccupied. And therefore, we have a total of 16 valence electrons surrounding this uh, transition metal center. And now let's review this ligand substitution. Uh, this alkene may substitute one of the four chloride ligands. Now we have this structure. Again, this palladium uh, bears a plus two charge. Each chlorine bears one negative charge. So overall, it has a negative one charge on the complex. If we look at this bond, this bond is actually a donor accepted bond. The alkene donate the two pi electrons to form this bond with palladium. So now water comes in. So another uh, aqua ligand replaces another chloride ligand. So now in this structure, we have two chloride ligands, one aqua ligand and one alkene ligand. And again, this is a three center two electron uh, donor accepted bond. The two electrons uh, come from this alkene. So uh, that makes this alkene uh, more readily to accept uh, lone pair electrons from water. And this is what's going on here. So the water molecule may attack uh, this, uh, this carbon to form this carbon CHOHR over here. And this is CH2. So now one chloride, another chloride uh, may leave this transition metal complex. Uh, this is the rate determining step because we're going to break a palladium uh, chlorine bond and we're going to break this nice square planar structure of this transition metal. Again, over here, uh, I think there are 16 valence electrons uh, surrounding this uh, uh, palladium 2 plus. Now over here, this palladium is surrounded by only three ligands, one, two, three, one chloride, uh, one hydroxide, and over here, this is CH2. Uh, this carbon is bonded to hydrogen, OH, and R. And now we're going to look at uh, this beta hydrogen elimination step. So this is alpha carbon, this is beta carbon, therefore this hydrogen is a beta hydrogen. This beta hydrogen may form a bond, a sigma bond with this palladium, and meanwhile break uh, the bond between this hydrogen and this carbon. So now we get uh, this uh, square planar structure back. And again, uh, this palladium is uh, two plus charged. Chlorine is one minus charged. Hydrogen is one minus charged. These two ligands are considered as neutral ligand. And now, uh, this from here to here, it's going to be a little complex. Um, uh, this ligand may leave the transition metal complex. And if you look at this structure, this is CH2, double bond, COH. And this is going to be converted to a ketone structure right away. 
Uh, this structure and the ketone structure are tautomers. All right, this hydrogen will move, shift uh, to the CH2 here to form a methyl group, and this double bond will go here. And then you have CH3, single bond, carbonyl, C double O, and then single bond R. So you get the product, uh, the ketone structure over here. But of course, if R is a hydrogen atom, uh, this is acetaldehyde. And also, meanwhile, this H and Cl, these two ligands, will both leave the transition metal center, and this is called reductive elimination. Uh, why it's reductive elimination? Well, uh, if you have this H and chlorine both bonded to palladium, the oxidation number on H is minus 1. On chlorine, it's also minus 1. So in this structure, you have a 2 plus oxidation number on palladium. Uh, once these two ligands leave this palladium transition metal center, well, this palladium becomes palladium zero. And that's why this is called a reductive elimination. In this step, this palladium goes from plus two to zero, therefore reductive. And it loses two ligands, therefore elimination. Reductive elimination from here to here. And now we have palladium zero. Uh, we need to get this catalyst. So from palladium 0 to palladium 2, this is a oxidation reaction. Uh, this palladium 0 needs to lose two electrons. So how can this palladium 0 lose two electrons? Well, it can give the two electrons to uh, two copper 2 plus. So I think there's a mistake here. I got this from Wikipedia page, but there's a mistake here. The arrow should be pointing from copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus. All right, this uh, copper 2 plus may get one electron to form copper 1 plus, so we need two of them. We need two of them to consume the two electrons from this PD0. So again, the direction of the arrow is wrong on this Wikipedia page. Now, of course, uh, this arrow is wrong, so you go from copper 1 plus to copper 2 plus, right? This is because we can't just keep consuming copper 2 plus. Somehow we need to consume, uh, we need to convert copper 1 plus to copper 2 plus so that this copper 2 plus can continue accepting electrons from PD0. So how can we go from copper 1 plus to copper 2 plus? Well, this is oxidation, so we need to uh, have another uh, reduction reaction. So now we have this reaction. Oxygen comes in. Oxygen is a good uh, oxidizing reagent, of course, right? So oxygen may accept electrons from copper 1. And this reaction uh, takes place in an acidic environment. So we have oxygen gas, uh, we have protons, and then we have two additional electrons uh, from 2, copper 1. And if you have O2, you have two protons, and then you, if you have two additional electrons, you get water. Okay, so this reaction is coupled by this reaction. Uh, over here, uh, this oxygen gas is, um, this is, uh, this, uh, okay, this is uh, just one half of, you can imagine this one half mole of oxygen gas reacts with two moles of protons plus two moles of uh, electrons from two moles of copper one, and then to form uh, one mole water. Uh, because this uh, copper one plus and this copper two plus are not really consumed in this catalytic cycle, so over here, this uh, copper dichloride is also considered uh, one of the catalysts. But the main catalyst is this PD2+. This is uh, the main catalyst. And really, oxygen is one of the reactants. Okay, Oxygen oxidizes this alkene structure to this ketone structure. Uh, the solvent is water and DMF.